Be Inspired Special. On the way to Mount Carmel. Live from the Rainbow Theatre in London. Good evening, everyone. We are here on the altar of Finsbury Park with the pastors with us. On the way to Mount Carmel, on our campaign of Israel, I have also next to me here Pastor Oliver, who, who will be on a mission going to Israel, to the, to the Valley of Shaver. He has here also the request. Good evening, Pastor Joseph and everyone. I am holding here the outline of people's hands. I'm going to take to Israel with a mission. We used to say this, Pastor Joseph, mission given, mission accomplished. We are going there to bless those who made a covenant to God, and for sure, God will honor them. I can see you have the one from, from UK, also Ireland. Yes. And this is the outline of the hands of all the people in all the churches. Also, we have connect with us Bishop James, who today he is there in Manchester. Good evening, Bishop James. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me well? Yes, now we can, Bishop. Okay. Well, we are here in Manchester. We had a, a mission here. Actually, we're just finalizing a mission here in the church in Manchester. But we are connected with all of you in faith. And I wanted to talk to you about something that is very important for all of us to understand. If you if you are taking part of this campaign, you are considering take part, taking part of this campaign, then it's important you do it correctly. We've been speaking about uh, destroying the altars of Baal and building an altar for the living God. And we've given examples of the kinds of altars that people can have. Now, one of the things that people sometimes don't realize is how how subtle, how subtle certain altars are. This Sunday, I was taking a testimony in the church from uh, an assistant, and his wife was also an assistant, uh, Jair. Many of you saw his testimony by video. And the interesting thing, and he didn't mention this, I, I didn't mention this afterwards, but he was saying that for years, he fought for his then girlfriend, now wife, to convert because she she used to smoke a lot and drink and, and, and criticize the church, criticize his sacrifices. And he focused all his energy for years on her. And he didn't mention this at the time, but I, I didn't mention it afterwards in the service, that he may not have realized at that time but that person for him was temporarily an altar. Because whatever or whoever you invest all your energy into trying to please, into trying to do something for that thing or that person, that has become your altar. And we have an example in the Word of God. Uh, in the book of First Kings, when we start reading about Ahab, the Bible says in 1 Kings 16, verse 31, and it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing. What is a trivial thing? A trivial thing is something that's not that important. For example, I've got a, a tissue here that I was using earlier. This is a trivial thing. If I throw this in the bin right now or not, it is of no consequence. It makes no difference to anybody's life, to myself or Pastor Philip or anybody. I can just take this and throw it away or keep it. Either way, it makes no difference. That's a trivial thing. And the Bible says that it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. It's talking about Ahab that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Getting married to Jezebel, 
he he saw it as if it, it like it was nothing. It was just a wearing an alliance between him and another people. But it was not a trivial thing. From there, he began to serve and worship Baal. It started with that wedding. It started back there. And many times, people don't realize that the reason why their life doesn't reflect yet the power of God, the reason why that they haven't yet received the Holy Spirit, is because there is an altar that they haven't recognized as an altar because they think it's something trivial, something unimportant. So they say to themselves, certainly this cannot be an altar of Baal. Certainly this cannot separate me from God. But Pastor Philip, we have to be very careful because the, the altars of Baal, the things that separate us from God, sometimes is something that may not look like a sin, like the example we had over the testimony from yesterday. A man who was in the church fighting for his wife. How can that be a sin? That's not a sin. You're fighting for his wife. Or he was fighting for his wife. But certainly at that point, this for him was, and this is why his wife said, after five years that he was in the church fighting for me, when I saw him change because he received the Holy Spirit, then I said, no, I, I want to seek this God. So those years before, the focus was not the Holy Spirit. The focus was the wife. Is it a sin to fight for your son to change? Is it a sin to fight for your spouse to change? No. However, we have to be careful because sometimes that person, that thing, can take the place of God. And we don't know it's taking the place of God because we think this is not wrong. Like Ahab, I'm just getting married to Jezebel. I'm just making an alliance with another kingdom. But it was after that wedding that he started to serve and worship Baal. And so the little things that we don't realize, Pastor Philip, they become altars for Baal that separate us from God. Yes, Bishop. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. And the problem, Bishop, is, is that the person always roots something inside of herself. The problem is that we don't see the root. So the person has to go deep inside of her heart, deep inside of her mind, to, fi to find out what she is placing on the place that belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is like, for example, the person is fighting for someone and he's putting, she's putting all her strength on that person and she forgets that she's not on the altar of God. She's not praying. She's not sacrificing. She didn't forgive the person that she has a, a, a grudge inside of her heart. And she has to go deep inside of herself to find out the root, like something small, it may be small, but it is separating that, that person from God, from the altar of God. That's right. You know, I was talking to someone uh, a, few, a few days ago, and perhaps she's watching me now. And she said like this, Bishop, before I received the Holy Spirit, the one thing I hated the most, I was in the church for many years, and I, I loved the church. I loved the work of the church. I loved the pastors. But there was one thing that I hated. And that was sacrifice. Everything else I loved, I loved the chains of prayer, the purposes, the, the, the help the pastors provided, everything. But every time we spoke about the word sacrifice, I hated that. And, and maybe you say, but Bishop, if I can remove the altars of Baal, why do I need to do the financial sacrifice? Because the thing that rules the world the most is money. The thing that people are attached to the thing that people kill for the most, the thing that people fight for the most is money. That's why the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. So the altar always has, or the, the, the campaign always has two sides. The side of the, the, the spiritual side, we are destroying the altars of Baal. We cannot come to the altar 
with even one altar of Baal that you may think it's trivial, we can't have it standing. But there's always the, 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 the financial sacrifice. Why? Because that's what the heart of the person is attached to. And I'm going to speak now to Pastor Fabio, they're from Peckham. I hope we can connect here. But Pastor Fabio, we were saying on Sunday that there were many widows in Israel, but God sent Elijah. Jesus said this, many widows in Israel, but God sent Elijah to that specific widow. The question is why? Because she was willing to obey. When Elijah said, listen, take Take your flour, take your oil, make a cake, a bread, but first bring it for me. When, uh, when that woman, when that widow did that, she proved that she was different from all the other widows. The, God does not make mistakes. He sent Elijah to, to the house of that woman, of that widow, because she was willing to obey. Her heart was not on the lead. So what she had could not do anything for her. It was a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil. Could do nothing for her. And she said, I'm going to let go of this. This is the purpose of the campaign. What you have, no matter what it is, and you're going to see a testimony in a moment after we speak to Pastor Fabio, but no matter what you have, cannot solve your problem. In the testimony from yesterday, Jair said, I sold my car. What is the point of that car if the wife was not converted? So for him, the car was of no consequence. So he sold it, put the value on the altar. He said, my God, you have to, to do something in my marriage. After he realized the value of the Holy Spirit. In the same way, Pastor Fabio, there's many people suffering in this world. But God is looking at those like the widow who are ready to trust what God is asking them to do. Yes, Bishop. And in every CKG... God has sent a prophet. In every church, there is a man of God that is there available daily, pass on to people the faith, the spirit, helping them to understand about sacrifice and give to them the word of faith that can lead them to the altar and receive a transformation in life. But the problem is many people even come to church, people who are suffering, people who are in pain, people who lost everything, people who are completely living a miserable life, sick and going through many issues. But when they receive from the, the prophet the challenge to come to the altar, they may not take the action. They should, as long as they don't take the action they are supposed to, that is to give their life, their soul, heart, mind, to sacrifice materially, to come to the altar with all their faith, as long as they don't understand that the prophet there that symbolized today Elijah is passed on to them the word of God, if they do not obey that word that come out from our mouth to surrender themselves on the altar, their life will remain the way it is because our God is a God of reaction. Without action, there will be no reaction from God in order to change these people's life. That's right. And, and you know, Pastor Fabio, the past is like you said, the pastor today is Elijah. Just like Elijah arrived in the house of the widow and said, do this, trust in God. The flower will not end. The oil will not end. The pastor who invites the person to come to the altar, you can see here the altar of our church in Manchester here. The pastor who invites the person to go to the altar is like Elijah. And when you read about Elijah, you, you, you think Elijah was really selfish. How could he ask for the last bread, the last cake for himself? How could he ask that? What a selfish thing to do. And how many people today, they say that about the pastors. How can the pastors not understand the situation of the people? What a selfish thing to do. But we, the only thing we are doing is we are being Elijah. We are being Elijah in your life if you believe. Now, if you don't believe, I can't do anything. But if you do believe, the altar is available to you. This Sunday now, the altar will be available to you. 
We, Elijah, we are inviting you to destroy your altar of Baal and to come to the altar to present your life through your sacrifice there. And the only outcome possible is for the fire to come down. We're going to watch now the testimony of Ira Selma from our church in the Bull Ring. Let's see how God transformed her life. I was feeling frustrated. I was really feeling devastated. Seeing that my marriage could break, could fall apart, I was really down. No words to, to express how I felt at that moment. I grew up in a very dysfunctional um, environment. So I grew up with my, my dad uh, having problems with alcohol and all the time I would see him, you know, beating my mom until that my mom had to leave, leave us. And at that time I had to grow and, and forget that I was a child to be able and be strong to look after my brother, my little brother. But all this brought so much emptiness inside of me. It was really like, the worst time in my life. And all the questions I had in my mind was kind of trying to understand why my mom left, why my parents are getting divorced, why do I need to grow with eight years old instead of playing? I need to grow and be able to look after myself. So I had all these questions inside of me, all this emptiness and all this loneliness. So going to school, I was just sad. Uh, I could not talk much or making much friends, but I didn't feel like people would understand uh, my feelings and my thoughts. All I knew was a dysfunctional family. So I didn't know about a happy family. I didn't know about a united family. I did because I didn't have none of that until I got married and I got married in Portugal. That's where I, I used to live. And everything was absolutely amazing. And getting married, I really believed that things would change and we were happy. We had our first son until my husband just decided that he was not happy in the country anymore and he didn't want to move. That was devastated that's that's the word because i didn't know what to do and i couldn't understand the reason why he wasn't happy where we were and i didn't want to leave my life that i already built there my career because I had a good job. I was at university my second year to be a lawyer. That was my, my dream. So I didn't want to leave anything behind. But in the other hand, I didn't want, to, I didn't want my family to, to be destroyed again. The fact that he wanted to move to England, we just started having arguments. And the worst thing was that I felt that he didn't want to spend more time with me because he just started going out with his friends. I just thought, how come he he wants to go to a different country saying that he wants to start a new life, but he's not spending time with me? I heard about the campaign and what the altar could bring to my life. And I took this opportunity because I didn't know uh, what to do. So I went, I went to the altar trusting that from there, God would give me the answer that I needed for that, for that time for my family. I sought for God's direction on what to do if I should stay in Portugal and give up on my family and just focus on my career, or if I should follow my husband and, and fight for my family to be united. And God spoke with me really strongly. He reminded me that I didn't want to go again, you know, face the same thing as I have done before, living in a dysfunctional family, a broken family where people get divorced. I didn't want to face that again. So I would need to sacrifice. God inspired me for the things that were really important, important to me at that time. I sold our car because what was the point, isn't it, of having um, the car, all the negative thoughts that I, I had regard my, my dad and, and everything, all the anger that I put on my husband. I went to the altar with all my life and I decided to buy the ticket and come to England, but I left all on the altar.
on the right altar this time. And I had my son in one hand and the suitcase in the other hand. I left all. I didn't bring anything. I was like, my God, I will go in your total dependence. As Abraham did, he went to a land that he didn't know. So I did the same thing. I left all my fears. I, I surrendered all my fears on the altar about not speaking English, not having anyone in the country. So I, I left all on the altar and I came. The Holy Spirit has guided me. He instructed me in, in what to do. I didn't need to be alone. I didn't need to take decisions on my own. I didn't need to try thing, do things with the strength of my arm because I had him. So I just needed to depend on him. I just needed to consult him to what he wanted me to do, the next steps of my life. Then I came to England and met my husband. The beginning was very difficult, but God was guiding me. The Holy Spirit was guiding me. And we had an opportunity to, to have our, our own place. And step by step, things were moving forward. And even though I didn't know how to speak English, I would practice a lot at home and, and say, my God, I want to go to that agency. So guide me, instruct me. And I would practice the English and, and go to many agencies by myself, like physically by myself. But the Holy Spirit was always there with me. And then I found a job. My husband was working as well, and step by step, things were moving forward. The fights and the arguments that I, I used to have before with my husband, they ceased. We stopped having this and even say like for the first time, we were working together for the, the same goal. We were not like having dreams separately. It wasn't anymore like him wanting something and I wanting something. We indeed became one through the campaign my family was completely restored. I could really see the power of God in my life. The campaign, it's an, an unmissable opportunity. And I always take part of the campaign because even though when, when I don't have anything I would like God to bless me with, but I know that the campaign gets, gets me closer to God. And that's what I want. So I keep going from campaign to campaign, from sacrifice to sacrifice. I'm very happy. I no longer sad. I no longer, I'm no longer void. I don't feel lonely anymore because I know, I know my value through the power of God. saved marriage because her marriage was a breaking point and a saved soul. Today, her husband is in the faith together with her. She's an assistant in our church full of the Holy Spirit. This is what the sacrifice does. When the sacrifice is perfect, it brings down the fire of God. You've heard the results of people who decided to build an altar for God and to sacrifice at that altar. And, and the things you've heard people say that they did were painful. I mean, imagine, you know, you, we've had people who sacrificed their salary, we've had people who sacrificed their car, selling the car, putting the amounts there on the altar. I mean, these are things that are painful. We have people who decided to confront their abusers and tell them, I forgave you. All this, please, all this makes the perfect sacrifice. And Sunday, we are coming to the altar with our perfect sacrifice because the fire is going to come down. I'm going to ask Pastor Oliver and Pastor Joseph to say the prayer. They are from the altar of Finsbury Park. Just reminding you that this Wednesday night will be the Wednesday for those who are thirsty for the Holy Spirit. And in Finsbury Park, after the service, I'm going to be speaking to all the assistants and all the group members, the members of the groups of the church. If you're an assistant in Finsbury Park, if you're a member of the group, a group in Finsbury Park, after the service, I'll be speaking to you. The same thing will be happening 
in all the churches. Okay? Let's talk to God. Let's pray as we prepare ourselves to come to the altar this Sunday. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we unite our faith here and our Father, and we pray for those who are taking part of this campaign. We pray for those who are going to the Mount Carmel, my Father. That is the Mount of Decision, because there are people, my Father, that are praying with us right now. They need a decision in their life. My Father, visit each one of them, and my Lord, make a miracles in their lives like never before. There are people, my Father, that they are going to the altar with all their strength because they say, my Lord, inside of them, enough is enough. Enough of this humiliation. Enough of this problem. Enough of this situation in my marriage, in my health, in my finances. Oh, my Lord, touching these people's lives and change their lives once and for all. Let your fire, my Lord, come down upon this people's life once and for all and honor them. Bless my Father your church like never before. We want to see testimony like never before here in our church. We are determined my Father. We that we are Elijah my Father nowadays and we determine that these people they will see your power, your fire in their lives and as we have seen testimony, we have watched a wonderful testimony we will see my father testimony in your church like never before bless those who are taking part of this campaign and honor them this is what we are determined here from the altar my father we pass for those who are in this faith my lord what you have given to us this certainty this fire in the name of our lord jesus from the altar we determine, my Lord, may your people see your power like never before in the name of our Lord Jesus. Yes, my Lord. As Elijah was a man of decision and brought the people to understand, to be defied. If Baal is God, let Baal answer. But if his God is God, God will answer the fire and this is what's going to happen this son of the tenth. Your fire, my Lord, will come down upon the life of all those who are in his faith. Like when he went to that widow, the widow was about to cook their last meal and die. Elijah came to her and said, you die if you want. Because if you believe in God, your life will going to change, my Lord. Here we are as Elijah's on the altar here, stretch our hands to the people, and we bless all those who are in the campaign. Honor them, my Lord, and bless them. This is what we determine in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we have challenged you to come every day, or as much as you can in the church, this throughout the week, as you know, we are now this last week of the campaign. We, let's come in full power. Let's come with all our heart. Come because every day will be a message. Every day will be a powerful testimony. Connect with us. Tomorrow, we're going to be back again, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. in the evening. Let's connect and be inspired. Let me in the spirit. Sunday now is the sun of the fire, and the fire will come down. God bless you, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.